got a question for the fellas. How come y'all are not shooting your shot in person anymore? Nowadays, it's just DM this, DM that, Instagram this, Facebook that, TikTok this, all these DMs. I don't know. Maybe I'm just old school. But to me, it's nothing like a guy making eye contact with you and then approaching you or coming with some original lines or making you laugh. Like, I love that. But now, I never see that anymore. Like, it's very rare for you guys to actually approach us and talk to us. So if you're a man watching this video, go ahead and stitch this video and answer the question, how come men are not shooting their shot in person? So uh, here's the story from Blaze Media. Now, the reason why... I felt inclined to do the story was because I saw O'Shea post up that video of that young lady trying to understand why it is that the men are backing off. Why is it that all of these guys out there suddenly are acting disinterested and suddenly they would rather use social media in order to approach rather than to not even bother trying to strike up conversations, to not even bother looking for the choosing signals. I'd like to also point your attention to the fact that today is the February the 20th. Valentine's Day came and went like a cold wind, just dissipated like a bad fart. There were some ladies who were lucky ladies who had their men, their hubbies, their boyfriends to actually take them out. And they, uh, you know, they went out and they enjoyed a lovely uh, night on the town and a lovely dinner. But there were a lot of ladies out there who were sitting at home watching TV. Reruns of Golden Girls, TV Land. Some of them cried themselves to sleep. Some of them just got in bed and said, you know what, to hell with the world, I'm going to sleep early. Well... I enjoyed my Valentine's Day night. We both enjoyed our Valentine's Day night. For those of you who actually know me, who actually sent you intimate photos that I don't want any of these doxers and these losers on YouTube getting their hands on, um, we had a good time, had a lovely, nice dinner, and, um, you know, I showed you some pictures and this, that, and other. But uh, a lot of ladies, they just didn't get that chance. They didn't get to go out. It's like, where's the, where, are your, where are your humble suitors waiting to take you out? Huh? Where, where, where's the champagne? Where's the bubbly? Unfortunately, for some of them, there wasn't any. Unfortunately. How unfortunate. It's too bad that they couldn't have changed their uh, behaviors long enough to have found somebody who was, uh, you know, interested in long-term relationships and whatnot. So anyway, the story here, this came from Blaze Media. This was after they had interviewed Jason Whitlock, I believe. American women created the passport bros. Lenny Kravitz is the original passport bro. I disagree with that, but um, I could say maybe he's a new age passport bro, pioneer, um, okay, in 1999, the half-black, half-Jewish rock star covered the 1970 Canadian classic American Woman, originally performed by the Guess Who. Kravitz won a Grammy for his version of the anti-American ode. Uh-oh, here comes a song right here. Okay, so wait, in order to properly do this, I'm going to have to throw on a little bit of background music. Okay... I'm going to have to turn that down just a little bit. I'm just going to turn it down. Let's turn that down just a little bit because I don't want YouTube senses messing with me. American woman, stay away from me. American woman, mama let me be. Don't come around and around my door. I don't want to see your face no more. I got more important things to do than spend my time of growing old with you. Okay, we'll stop right there because I don't know about these goddamn YouTube senses. These things are a pain in the ass with their monetization restrictions. <clears throat> so anyway, not long after divorcing American actress Lisa Bonet, a star of the Cosby show at the time, Kravitz dated a series of white, 
Foreign Starlets. French singer and model Vanessa Paradis, Brazilian model Adriana Lima, and Australian actress Nicole Kidman. I would have stayed away from all of them, honestly. I would have gone to, uh, you know, a different country altogether. I wouldn't... See, the problem is, if you go to any of these Western countries, you're basically getting the exact same thing. You're getting a feminist in different rappers. See, this, is, this goes beyond skin color. This isn't about skin color. It isn't about whether you're blonde, hair, blue eyed. No, 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 no. The problem that you're facing is you're getting a feminist in a different package. That's what you're getting. Now, some passport bros go to countries that are strictly patriarchal so that they can they know that they're absolutely getting women who care about family structure and who are indoctrinated into patriarchy. There's no better way to say it than that. But if you go for one of these Western women, no, you, you've, already, you've already shot yourself in both feet. So anyway, let me keep going. Uh-oh, here we go. We got a song piece again. Wait, let me see. What is it? Now, uh-oh, woman's... Okay, here we go. Now, woman, stay away. American woman, listen what I say. American woman, get away from me. American woman, mama, let me be. Okay, let's stop that right now. Okay, I bring all this up because things have turned so icy between black American men and women that there's now a popular movement called Passport Bros. And, uh, and by the way, I'm glad they pointed out the fact passport bros are black men getting passports and going abroad. White men who do this are called passport Joes. And women who get their passports and they go to like poor African countries and they go to Caribbean countries so that they can trick off on poor men or impoverished Africans, impoverished Caribbeans. Those are called the passport hoes. Okay, so we have the passport bros. The passport Joes, the passport hoes. So this is kind of a trifecta. It's like the holy trinity of passports. Okay? It's like a trifecta. Okay, so anyway. Um passport bros are pri up oh, here we go. This is and this is the definition. Do not forget the definition. Do not attempt to alter the definition. This is the definition, and I'm sticking to it. Passport bros are primarily black men who leap... But there you go. Wait, wait. Let me read that again because some of y'all are tone deaf. Some of y'all trolls don't seem to get it. I'm very serious about this. Passport bros are primarily black men who leave America shopping for... <laughs> they said shopping. God damn. <laughs> they said shopping. <clears throat> shopping for wives and girlfriends in Brazil, Colombia, Thailand, Costa Rica, and the Philippines. And anywhere outside of America. Well, you know, see, I wouldn't have said shopping. I, I have to disagree with that premise. I would have simply said, you see, this is this is how, this, see, this is what I don't like about these, these fake-ass shoddy journalists. There's no objectivity whatsoever. It's all subjective. There's no, there's no fact. It's just their opinion. They squeeze that shit in there. And if you're not careful, you'll read right over it and not even notice. How about we say... That passport bros are primarily black men who leave America searching for wives. Because we can all agree that they're searching. They're not shopping. Because it's, if you shop, you go into a store, you see a ticket on uh, uh, or, or something. It, like, let's say I'm looking for a rug. And the shit says $9.99. And then you just pull out your wallet and you buy it. That's not how this works. The... Uh, process for the k-1 visa and the spousal adjustment visa those things are very arduous it's more than just shopping okay but that's what happens when you have these shoddy ass journalists so anyway they're men who believe american women particularly black women have the wrong values expectations worldview and attitude for a serious relationship damn you hit them on every corner didn't you okay Passport bros chronicle their search for love and or sex on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. They're reviled and ridiculed on most social media platforms. Here's a question. How do you know that? How do you know that? Most social media platforms? Really? But this is shoddy. You know, who wrote this shit? Like, I should put this... Wait a minute. Jason Whitlock. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. 
All right, so bottom line is it's like, I, I just feel that this gives a false impression. We're not reviled on most social media platforms. First of all, there's a whole lot of social media platforms where the words passport bros have never even been uttered. So when you say most, you're talking about more than 50%. When you talk about more than 50% of the world's social media platforms, seriously? No, I mean, I, I can't accept these shitty premises, but this is, this is bullshit journalism, but whatever. But the movement is growing because the untreated disconnect between American black men and women is growing wider and wider. Black women see their role as leaders of the black community and primary breadwinners. Not in my house. Let me tell you something, guys. I just did my taxes. I just did my taxes, right? I've got more than two properties at this point. All of my shit has my name on it. Nobody else's name on my shit except mine. I've recently seen at least three divorces where, and I, I'm not even going to be very specific about this because I don't want to be specific about this because I don't want anybody recognizing themselves. You, you know how they say it like the end of movies that uh, this story is uh, intended to, uh, you know, talk about people, but there's no actual person named or used here and everything. Yeah, um, I've seen at least three divorces recently where what the woman does is she is doing her best to unentangle herself from the finances that she is in with the man. In one such case that's still ongoing, one of my clients, um, she's living in a different state, not naming names, she's living in a different state, um, he would have access to her pension, and her name is on the mortgage, and I keep insisting on this dude, I keep telling him, listen, you gotta get her name off your mortgage, so that this way, if anything happens to you, she doesn't automatically just come and inherit the property. Um, I think I've mentioned this before in another story. In another case, I was actually able to help one of my clients refinance their spouse's name off of their mortgage because they were going through their own divorce, right? And I had this person refinance themselves from a really shitty home equity line of credit. I never use home equity lines of credit. I had them get off of that home equity line of credit. And I had them refinance to a 3% before interest rates started rising. So that was about a year ago this time. And I, I called them. I said, listen, do this now. I've got a perfect setup for you. Do it now. They got their refinance. And they got that person's name off their mortgage. And I specifically told them, I was like, listen, if anything happens to you, you don't know what this person will do with your property. And you don't know what this person will do with your kids because that these kids are not that person's kids. So they listened to me. We got it done. I'm all about getting shit done. It's like I get more done before 12 o'clock than most people get done all day. In the last situation... Client, divorce, and how? what's the best way I can put this without being specific? Um, the spouse that was being left by the divorce self-deleted themselves. Okay? So I've seen at least three situations that are more than enough warning to me to say, Number one, do not marry in America. Do like it's it's like it's like it, it just said it's a fucking warning. Like it's like a papal bull. Do what it says. Do not marry in America. Do not marry an American woman. American woman, get away from me. American woman, I don't want to be a divorcee. Okay, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay, so I, I've got an enough warnings from watching real life to say, no, thank you. I'm taking my ball and I'm going to a different court. The movie War Games taught us the only way to win is not to play. It's just that simple. You are involved in a war. No matter how you want to think about it, 
War stands for we are right. You are involved in a war. Gender war, you call it whatever you want. The bottom line is you are involved in the ultimate battle of ideology. At the one end, you've got your happiness hanging on the line. On the other end, you've got divorce court waiting for your ass, lots of sleepless nights, a paycheck that says you're being garnished by such and such and such, and possibly putting a barrel in your mouth if you get my drift. So no, 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 no. You are at war. I don't care what you think about it. You can disagree. Fine, go out there and get your ass kicked and chewed up. Go ahead. You need to divest. It's just that simple. Because your option is to get your ass eaten up by Judge Madeline Ephraim, the divorce court judge. That's your option. So anyway, let me keep reading this because I, I will divert the hell out of this story. Uh, let's see. Uh, it says black women see their role as leaders of the black community and the primary breadwinners. The Democrat Party, leftists, corporate media, and the LGBTQ movement have partnered with black women in imposing matriarchal culture. Newton's third law applies. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. With no institution or individual addressing the major rift between black men and women, the men are abandoning American women, searching for women in other countries who are not hostile towards traditional relationship roles. Now, I think in this paragraph, I think the, the thing that stands out to me is he switches from major rift between black men and women, and then he switches to the men are abandoning American women. Let's understand something. This isn't just happening to black men and black women. This is happening to American men and American women. American men, whether they white, black, I can't really say Hispanic and Asian so much because for the most part, their culture has kept them moving forward as evidenced by the previous census of 2020. And I've showed you that census many times. It specifically said, and I'll even post the URL. It specifically says Asians and Hispanics are leading growth in America. It shows that whites have fallen behind and it showed that blacks only grew by a very small percentage to which I would argue a large amount of the reason why we have so much trouble getting past that 13 or 14 percent of black Americans is partially because of abortion. Now these women would love to say it's because of white racist cops shooting black men the reality is, no, they couldn't shoot that many of us. No, it's abortion that's killing more of us than the KKK or these cops ever could have dream of killing. It's abortion. But, as you know, up until my hero, Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice, not only in one breath was able to not only throw abortion out, but on top of that, he gave me back my Second Amendment rights to uh, conceal carry even here in the great state of New York. And then in the very next breath, when um, New York's uh, Governor Hochul and them, they tried to say, oh, yeah, well, we're going to set up gun-free zones. It's like, nah, they're like, nah, that's unconstitutional. And so in the very next breath, Justice Clarence Thomas, the most important, the most important Supreme Court judge on that bench, the most important Supreme Court judge on that bench. He gave us our rights back. Our, our, our first and second amendment rights are secure. There you go. And I know that triggers people, but I don't give a shit. So anyway, where am I? The yearning for traditional women and pushback against matriarchal culture explains the meteoric rise of social media influencers such as Kevin Samuels and Andrew Tate. Now, Kevin Samuels was lucky in that his voice was always there, but the problem was there was so much noise that you couldn't hear him. What did it take to quiet everybody down low enough for you to be able to actually hear what he was saying? Well, it took a couple of things. Number one, it took COVID pandemic. Kevin Samuels' channel 
on YouTube exploded during the COVID pandemic. Everybody was sitting at home. People were bored. Television was boring. Movies were boring. The government wasn't cranking out welfare checks fast enough. People were taking those welfare checks, spending them on Bitcoin. So for the most part, a lot of the rabble rousers, a lot of the um, carnival barkers, their voices were able to grow real loud, especially these idiots trying to convince people to go into cryptocurrency. Kevin Samuels had been around for a very long time, but his show average at best, which I do believe he paid world star hip hop to help him uh, popularize, that catapulted him towards what is a million followers. And even after he died, his channel is continuing to grow. There are people who are biting his content and it was funny. It was always funny to me. Kevin Samuels would tell people, do not use my content without my permission. But here's the thing. Now that he's dead, they can use his content and use it with impunity. And nobody is pretty much going to file any copyright infringements on him. But the most important thing about that is he's basically immortalized because his content is still continuing to spread. Which I actually have a question if you were to die and you've got YouTube money still coming in, who does that money go to and like what happens to that money? But those are questions like I've never like, you know, I've never actually got solid answers for. I, I really don't know because his his channel is still growing. I, I guess his family must have been given the keys to his account. I really don't know. But um, his his channel is still worth money. His channel is worth something. But anyway. <coughs> Kevin Samuels died unexpectedly last year. He had built a huge following discussing black women's unreasonable relationship expectations. Tate postures as hypermasculine. The Romanian government is investigating him for operating a sex trafficking ring. Tate says the investigation is fraudulent in an attempt to silence a loud voice fighting against the emasculation of men. Tate, who is of mixed race, advises men to date and marry Muslim women. These issues should also be addressed strongly within the black church, but the church is mostly silent because the black church primarily caters to black women. Uh, let me tell you something else about the black church. Come Sunday morning, most black men are not in the black church. Come Sunday morning, most black men are either working at the gym, in their bed, asleep, or doing something else. They're not in the black church. It's funny actually to me because you have a lot of black women who go to the church praying for these uh, high value men. And God, in all his magnificence and his mercy, doesn't send these men to these women at all. So these women go to the church on their knees, oh Lord, please, please, Lord, send me a man who makes three hundred thousand dollars. Please, Lord, he has to be at least six foot three. Please, Lord, I he, I expect him to have a penis that's at least twelve inches long. God doesn't seem to respond to those prayers, uh, partially because the available uh, pick of the litter is actually really, really low. Uh, most men don't make three hundred thousand dollars. Most men aren't six foot three. Most men are actually between like five and seven inches or something like that, according to the you know the studies by Johnson and Wade's, whatever. But anyway, they're in there praying though. They're in there praying. They're on their knees. They're in the front of the church. They're on their knees. Oh Lord, a piece of pasta casa, a piece of pasta casa. They they speaking in tongues and shit. And they praying hard and they ain't getting it. Black men are at home in their bed. They in their bed watching sports. They playing, they at home playing PlayStation 5. They playing uh, Mega Man or The Last of Us Part 2. They ain't in the church. I'm sorry, ladies. That's just what it is. They ain't there. I, I, I've stepped into these churches. I've looked around. The only guys there are married. They're old men married. And young boys who were forced to come by their moms. That's all I've seen. When I go there, you don't see that many young men. And the ones who are there are either taken or not taken or rainbow flaggers. 
Okay, so anyway, where are we? Okay, uh, corporate media basically forbids any discussion that promotes a Christian male heterosexual perspective. Well, that depends what kind of corporate media, because I do know that there are some forms of corporate media that absolutely do cater to Christian male heterosexual perspectives. One of them is the gun industry. You may have noticed YouTube has constantly released anti-gun uh, uh, owner, anti-Second Amendment. They're trying to make it so you can't even slide your clip into your pistol before shooting it on your gun reviews now. So basically, they've already shown that they're anti-Constitution. They've already shown that they're anti-Second Amendment. And it's leading a lot of people to quit and go to other um, uh, social medias like Rumble, I believe, and Bumble or something like that. I don't know. I think it's Rumble. I, I, I honestly don't know. But... um. They're leaving. A lot of them are leaving. Some of them have gone like over to Truth Social and this, that, and other, which I don't think that's a big enough platform to replace YouTube. But the reality is a lot of those people have gotten fed up and they're tired of the uh, threats against their channels. And a lot of them are just leaving. Uh, I think one of their newest rules is you're not allowed to use silencers in a video. Now, here you are shooting paper targets and they're telling you you're not allowed to have a silencer in the video. You're not allowed to show loading of the weapon it's like are you kidding me really but they've already showed you what side they're on look at the reaction to my comments on tucker carlson's show last week i argued that the destruction of the nuclear family drives the chaos violence and bad policing we see in black communities no shit i argued the absence of male leadership dooms black communities mm, that's a there's something they don't want to talk about at all Rather than debate these obvious facts, reaction across most social and mainstream media platforms focused on the timing of my comments and or whether I was fair to Cyril and Davis, the female police chief installed to fix Memphis's violent crime problem. We're forbidden to even discuss the fact that 60 years of great society legislation have turned black men and women into enemies incapable of sustaining marriage, developing masculine men and maintaining order in their communities. Things are so bad between us that success is defined as moving into all white neighborhoods, being allies to drag queens, and affirming queer theory. <laughs> what the fuck? It's so bad that black men of means are getting passports to find women outside of America. Passport bros is a thing because you can't sustain a relationship on racial idolatry or racial victimization. That's the common ground for black men and women at this point. Hey, we both experience racism. Let's date. Heterosexual masculine men seek long-term relationships with women whom they find common ground with about roles in the relationship. Men of faith seek women whom they find common ground with about biblical values. Let me tell you something, and you don't have to listen to me. Let me tell you something. The worst man that you can possibly hope to date or marry is one of these bible thumpers from a church trust me trust me that's the worst i speak for myself i don't need to pull out a bible and use that to affirm my beliefs or to affirm facts or to affirm my convictions no i speak for myself the last see this is the problem a lot of these women this is what they chase after. They want the big, tall preacher guy. The big, tall preacher guy who has the community, uh, how should I say, the high social status. That is the worst possible, that is the worst possible person you can follow. It's the worst. It's the absolute worst. But the, you can't tell these women nothing. So, you know, they're just going to have to figure it out for themselves. Worst possible. That, that, that'll never work. I mean, even when you look at Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King... How many, um, what were they called? How many uh, indiscretions did the, uh, I guess you could say the CIA or the FBI uncover about him? He was cheating on his wife. That was a reality. And the, the sad thing about it was, you know, using the common ways of doing things like using the phone or going out to meet somebody. Here you got the FBI, CIA being used against him. They're taking pictures of him and they tapping his phone. But here's the problem. It was true. It's not like they made it up. It was true. So, you know what, ladies? Y'all do your own thing. I honestly don't give a shit anymore. I don't care. I really don't. So, the reality is that's the worst possible dude you could be following behind. Because usually 
those men are weak and they're using the Bible in order to make themselves strong. And that's not kind of how you're supposed to do it. It's like you're supposed to be a strong man in and of yourself. And you're, you're supposed to be able to fight and stand up for yourself. Not have to hide behind the words of God that were printed by somebody else. That's just how I feel about it. But these women are in church on their knees praying for example. Oh Lord, please make sure he's six foot seven. And make sure he's got a 12 inch uh, eggplant in his pants. And please Lord, make sure he's got $300,000 $300,000 coming in every year. I just want $300,000, Lord. Those coach bags aren't cheap, Lord. I need that coach bag. I want me a brand new Gucci. Worst possible choice you could make. Next. If a woman thinks being an ally to the LGBTQ alphabet mafia is more important than being an ally to God, there's going to be a problem in the relationship. If she objects to male leadership in the relationship, there's going to be a problem. Our marriage rate is low and our divorce rate is astronomical because we don't agree on the basic fundamentals. The discord over fundamentals leads to a baby mama culture. Baby mama culture leads to train wreck neighborhoods and communities. Baby mama drama is driving or I'm, I'm sorry, driving men to acquire passports and look elsewhere for relationships. You can lie to yourself and claim these men are bitter or aren't men or man, I'm sorry, man enough to deal with a so-called strong black woman. A man. Uh oh, here we go. Here's the song again. Here's the song again. Here we go. Here we go. I got to do it. Do, do, do. American woman said, get away. American woman, listen what I say. Don't come a hanging around my door. Don't want to see your face no more. I don't need your war machines. I don't need your ghetto seeds. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Okay, well, it looks like I got through the story finally. There we go. There we go. Got through the whole thing. So I guess this is the point where I'm supposed to ask, what do you think about this? But I, I mean, the thing about it is the facts, the facts are facts. I mean, this is just what it is. I And I, you know what? I think it's so funny. It's like, you should see my face every time one of these women pops up with one of these TikToks or I see one of these news articles. It's like, hey guys, you gave me free content for Christmas, thank you. I start drooling like the alien xenomorph from Alien 3, I start drooling. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to make a story, but I can't wait to make a new YouTube video, I can't wait. My eyes light up like Christmas every time one of these things comes out. The content writes itself. It just It's just so easy. Everybody's on Passport Bros now. Even the people who don't even want to talk about it can't stay away from it because that's what everybody's focusing on. I keep posting the URL articles and the ones that stood out to me the most are the ones that, uh, you know, basically uh, point to what the future demographics are looking like. So the first one I thought was really important is they're saying that um, less than 2% of sperm donors in America are black males, which leads me to believe that in their all of their hypergamy, these women refuse to use that 2% that are there, and they're going to keep going after the wealthy, tall black males. They're going to keep going after them. But the 2% of sperm donors that they were able to sucker into lending them their DNA, Pookie and Ray Ray, the 2%, there's two of them, Pookie and Ray Ray, the women don't want that stuff. They don't want, they don't want that, that, that nasty buttercream. They don't want that. They want Dr. Johnson, and they ain't going to get it because you won't find any black man of any means, of any intelligence, of any money-making earning strategy. You won't find him hanging around a sperm bank offering to, to ejaculate a fucking cup. You're not going to find it. Number two, by 2030, 45% of American women are expected to be single and childless. You know what I call that? And by the way, you can read the articles. You know what I call that? I call that progress. 
In the 1980s, the movie War Games told us the only way to win is not to play. And that's it. And they could say whatever they want about me. They call me Dusty. Oh, yeah, well, nobody want you. Nobody want you. You, 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 you a monkey. You ugly. Uh, uh, you Dusty. They could say listen, They could say whatever they want about me. But the thing about it is they ain't getting the other guys either. Because the other guys are woke up too. <laughs> between Kevin Samuels, between the constant drumbeat on these disgusting social media channels, but, but, but the, the view and all of this matriarchal insanity that they've been forcing on us all this time. All of these men seem to finally be waking up now. See, the mistake that they made was shutting down this fucking economy for that pandemic because now everybody's on the exact same code. Everybody's on the exact same code. Not only that, even without social media, these men are waking up and they're seeing, they're like, wait a minute. It's like, wait a minute. So you're telling me that even if I marry this person, she can divorce my ass, take half my shit, take my kids, move in with some other dude. And every time I want to see my kids, I got to butt heads with this other dude. How do you think a lot of these gun battles get started? It's like most of these things aren't between drug dealers and gangsters. No, most of these things are between regular men. There was a video of a white guy who went over to the other guy's house and the guy shot him on his lawn. That's happened more than you know it's happened. We just caught that one on video. It's affecting white men. It's affecting black men. It's even affecting, in some cases, Hispanic men who are in this country. And the reality is, it's like men don't want no parts of this no more. They don't, they, they don't want any part of it anymore. They want to divest. If I had a fucking rocket ship and enough, like if I, if I knew that there was another planet out there that was an M-class planet where you could live on it, I'd be the fuck out of here. Like, I think that's part of the reason why they're holding back space travel, because they know that the second that we have an option, we're getting the fuck out of here. We're going to pack our shit and leave. They know they don't want us on Mars because they know we're going to leave. They don't want us in. They don't want us anywhere else but here. They can control us here. See, they can't control us when we leave. And that's what Passport Bros is all about. You decided, yeah, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to go overseas. I'm going to meet me a new woman. I'm going mean, to get a Thai, a Vietnamese. Oh, oh, let me not forget about Vietnam wingman. but Because I've been looking at some videos about Vietnam, and I'm thinking I want to make my own video about Vietnam. But if I go to Vietnam, I also want to go to Cambodia at the same time. I want to do like maybe 15 days in one, 15 days in the other, or maybe even 30 days in one, 30 days in the other. But uh, I'll get there. I'll get to that sooner or later. But um, the thing about it is they already know these dudes want out. The dudes want out especially the dudes of means. And the sad thing is the dudes of means are the ones who are the passport bros. Pookie and Ray Ray are content to stay right here and to keep being uh, simpanzees for Keisha and Shaniqua. They are content to stay right here. They're the ones who are, oh, you don't need to go nowhere. All you need is a better mouthpiece. All you need is a better mouthpiece. You got to get yourself in game. Get some game. You gotta, if you had better game, you wouldn't need to go tricking overseas. You need a better mouthpiece. They sound exactly like these, the, these, these strags on TikTok. They sound exactly like them. Be, listen, if, they, if Pookie and Ray Ray are happy staying right here and fighting over a uh, single mama Keisha with three and four kids, bum Keisha, uh, the queen with the K, because she Keisha's the queen. If they want to stay here and do that, that's fine. That, that, listen, this is America. You can do whatever you want. rest of us taking our passports, getting the fuck out of here. The second that we get a chance. The other strategy, obviously, is moving abroad and moving abroad with your pension. Now, that's pretty much my strategy. I'm going to move abroad. I'm going to rent out my properties here, have that little bit of income sustaining me overseas, and the only time I'd ever come back here is either if I got to deal with this, which I, you can do your taxes all over the internet. You don't even have to come back here. But um, no, that's that that's my strategy. I don't even have that much longer to go. And, you know, I have all types of people trying to push me in different directions. Oh, you should do this. You should do that. I'm like, fuck that. It's like, what do you, it's like, listen, I'm not trying to improve this society at all. I, it, I'm, I'm with the, I'm with the team that says, let it burn. 
because we already know how bad it is. It's like it's gotten that bad where you literally want to leave. You don't want any parts of it. That's what they don't either want to talk about. That's what they won't accept or that's what they want to ignore. These men have had enough of this. And it, it go, I've, I've said this a hundred times. You have these young men who are getting more and more um, apathetic to society. They're, oh, how come Daniel doesn't want to apply for college? How come we can't get these boys to go to college? I keep on posting these stories. They keep on showing how young men dropping out of college, dropping out of the workforce. How come Daniel doesn't want to go to college? Daniel just wants to sit there and play his PlayStation 5. How come he doesn't want to go to college? How come Daniel doesn't want to be a part of the, 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 the liberal American dream? Nah, uh War games taught us. The only way to win is not to play. These men have assessed the situation. They've seen forward. And they're like, wait a minute. If I'm a part of this shit, I'm going to end up fucked up. Just like my old man. Or just like this one I know. Or just like the other one I know. I, I mean, I bring it up. I'm thinking about it to myself. It's like, I know, I know at least at this point right now. I know two people. Two at this point. Who've deleted themselves over a divorce. Deleted themselves. And you know what the shame of it is? The real shame of it is people don't want to talk about other people's issues and other people's problems. So what ends up happening is everybody just keeps it, you know, on down low and silent. And then something happens. Oh, my God. How did this happen? Didn't anybody know? Didn't anybody it's like, yeah, we knew all the fucking time. It's just that we didn't want to either talk about it or we had other shit to do and we didn't care about it. That whole talk about uh, trying to work with mentally ill people and help mentally ill, that's bullshit. Nobody ain't trying to do none of that shit. And here's the scary thing about it. A lot of these men in this country, I've said this a hundred times, are suffering from grief. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's stages of grief. And anomie. They're suffering from grief and anomie. My only obligation is to pack up as much of my shit as I can and move out of here before the real fireworks start happening. More and more, you're hearing about these self-deletions. More and more, you're hearing about family delete, entire families deleted. I was just, what was I was on you, I was on Yahoo News earlier today, not even earlier today, not that long ago. Guy took out what? What is this? SC mother shot to death in Kroger Park after fight with woman she didn't know. Okay, that's a different story. But I I've seen all the well. First of all, as I said, I know now two people deleted themselves over divorce, and I'm seeing more and more self deletions. I'm seeing more and more uh, murder suicides. I'm seeing more and more family deletions where you have a family a father. Wiping out the whole family. And you're like, wow, why would you do that? Like, what about you? Get and these dudes, I'm telling you, these dudes are suffering from grief and anime. But this country is more concerned with giving Ukraine $500 million than it is with fixing the problems that we got right here. That's where our concern is. Our concern is, is giving away money. That, uh, to everybody else who doesn't need it. But we're not fixing our problems right here. And our problems right here are sneaking up on us like the Grinch that stole Christmas. It's ridiculous. So the thing about it is these men, and I, you don't need to be no goddamn PhD to figure this out. You don't need to do a fucking study to figure this out. No, these boys are growing into men and they understand that there's no future for them. They understand that. I am so fortunate that I was born in the 80s. I was able to learn uh, self-discipline. I was able to learn hard work. I was able to learn a skill and a trade. And I was able, I, I can honestly say once I could retire, I can honestly say that, yes, I got in and I got out. You know, I feel like I'm one of those mafia guys who gets in and he tries to get out, but right before he gets out, they somehow figure out a way to kill him off. No, 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 no. The issue is, these boys being born right now, there's no way out for them and there's no way forward. They don't want to end up uh, driving Amazon trucks 
I'm looking at this Amazon Prime uh, ad right now. They don't want to end up like that. They don't want to end up alone playing PlayStation 5 and they, or PlayStation 7 in their underwear and they got a girlfriend who's cheating on them. They, they don't want that. They don't, they don't want to deal with that. So the smartest thing that they can do, make their money, get their passport, and leave. Divest. That is the smartest possible thing. Any other solution most likely is a roll of the dice. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. When I was a kid, I never imagined things would be this fucked up. I never imagined it. I grew up on Disney movies. Disney basically said, yeah, well, you know, your life is going to be like this. And eventually it's going to be like this. And eventually this is you. You're going to die like Mufasa. But we can accept that. But this shit right here, no, nah, you can't accept this. You can't. So basically, guys, it's like these guys are suffering from grief and enemy. The smart ones have put out a game plan. They say, yeah, I'm going to get my passport. I'm going to go to Brazil, Colombia, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Thailand, Beijing, Bangkok, Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City. Phnom Penh, Cambodia, they have gamed out a plan. They say, yo, listen, life is waiting for me somewhere else. There's a lot of, last thing I'll probably say, there's a lot of foreigners who've recently been expressing the fact that they don't think that the American dream exists anymore in America. They're saying it exists in Dubai. They're saying it exists elsewhere. And I'm inclined to agree with them at this point. This, like, first of all, when when your starter homes are a half million dollars when your starter, when your little shack starter homes are a half million dollars because your inflation is out of control. When your welfare state is pinching all of your pennies before you even get them. When you're literally telling people that by the time you retire, you may not be able to retire because there's no possible way you could save up enough money. They're literally saying, oh yeah, well you need two and three million dollars saved up to retire. Meanwhile, a passport bro is like, you know what? If I retire on a $30,000 pension, I can go live in Vietnam or I can go live in Philippines and I can live like a king or and I don't even have to spend that much money, but I can live healthy and well. Foreigners are saying it more and more. They say, yeah, the American dream don't exist here no more, to which I would say, whose fault is that? Whose fault is that? My thinking is. You voted for this. So don't be upset now. And I'm not talking about all of you voters. I'm talking about the ones who literally elected the worst possible governors that they could pick, the worst possible presidents they could pick, the ones who stood up there and promised that they were going to give you handouts. I still don't know how the fuck Governor Hochul got into office. And I understand how she got in there because they forced Cuomo out and she ran basically unopposed. Even though Zeldin, there were some people, I, I know women who hated her. And they, they say, yeah, I'm voting for Zeldin. She got right up in there too. And now she's got these uh, red light cameras. These cameras are running 24-7. She promised that she was going to do that. They got red light cameras running 24-7. When you're on the queen's side and they catch you for going anything over about like 35 miles per hour and you're getting a $50 ticket in the mail. Meanwhile, it's like the welfare state has grown so large that they are looking for any and every way to finance it and simultaneously bringing in more illegal aliens to add to the welfare state. You tell me what sense that makes. But a lot of these men, again, have said, you know what? There's no way forward for me. I'm not signing up for the debt for their public schools. I'm not signing up for the debt to go to their colleges. I'm not signing up for the debt to go to their grad schools. I'll get me a job. I'll be a trucker. I'll be a train driver. I'll get something that I just work with my hands. I'll sacrifice my body to make enough money. I'll get my passport and I'm out of here. That's what you've done. That's what you've created. So to address after that long diatribe, to address the girl at the very beginning, that right there is the reason why men aren't approaching you anymore. Well, hello everybody. I'm from Thai. 
I'm from the Philippines. We're sitting here long as time for a passport to come in. So where are you? We're waiting for the passport, bro. <laughs> Don't hate. Cheers. Passport bros phenomenon, and here's an insight that a lot of people miss. The way these men are leaving their own countries to go to lower income countries to find wives, and they say that it's because the women there are more feminine and they really value femininity in a woman. They say that the women in their own countries, they're not as feminine anymore, they're masculine, and they just don't want that in a partner. But then I look around me, my neighbors, my friends, and a lot of the women here are feminine, they're beautiful, they have a soft feminine aura, they treat their men well, they cook, they clean, they do everything. And then I realize that I'm in a high income neighborhood and their husbands, they're high earners. This just highlights how femininity has become a luxury in the US. Because it has become a luxury that a lot of men cannot afford, they go to places where femininity is the norm and not luxury. And that's okay, good for them. Bottom line is, if you're a feminine woman, you get the best pick of men in any I society. guess the question you need to ask the average American man, when you go overseas and you're staying in your condo and you happen to meet a chick just like this, it's like, what goes through a man's mind when he meets a nice chick like this? Now, you know where you'd find this right here? Because a lot of guys be asking me, oh, where do you find this? Philippines, Indonesia, South Korea. And you meet a woman like this. Oh, by the way, Thailand. I have to say Thailand. Yes. Even Laos and Cambodia, you can meet, man, you meet a woman like this and she is waving to you and she's giving you the choosing signals, I guess they call it choosing signals, and she's waving to you. She's like, honey, come this way to heaven and paradise. But in order to ensure that your night ends exactly like this, you need someone to help you meet the person of your dreams for love, for marriage, this is is who you should talk to, vietnamwingman.com. Give them a look. Men marrying black men. A lot of Arab and brown women are reaching out and they're trying to find black men. And I say black men are kind. They're very secure in their masculinity. They're also gentle. They're also not like, like, I see this a lot in the Arab community because they grew up in it. Men get very shy that their women are, are out there or their women work or their woman does something. And black men are very chill and secure about it. Like she's on her dean, she's respecting herself. I'm not gonna feel shy about this. And that's a huge cultural difference that I definitely appreciate from marrying a black man. So do yourself a favor, ladies. Find yourself a black man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just curious as to why so many modern women are confused as to why men are leaving. You know, why we have the passport bros and men who are deciding to look for women elsewhere. A lot of women are asking the question, why? And some of them seem so oblivious to the point where they really don't get it. They really seem to not understand why men are saying, hey, we want to look for love somewhere else. I can cook, I can clean. Uh oh. Yeah, see, this is why I came to Thailand to find a traditional woman. Uh oh. See, in the United States, oh. women don't cook and clean. Oh. All they do is complain. And we don't got time for that. That's why I got my passport and I've left. Talk to I've her, left the United States to come seek a wife to have a traditional relationship. So, yeah, give me a kiss. When you pay attention to the passport bros, like they're getting women from like the DR, Colombia, yes. uh, the Philippines, Thailand, mm. like oh. women can that can speak very little English, women that don't have and, education, and not, women that, that need missing, them, women that, that need women them. Women are raised to be wives. Mm -hmm. They learn everything in, in other from, communities, from yeah. birth, from That's their father, from their mother, <laughs> how to be a wife and how to support your men. Women that need them. It's not even women Every that need them. It's women that treat them with respect. So we don't. Y'all know y'all don't. Stop, <laughs> no, like, stop yourself. <laughs> That's don't. not true. <laughs> Fuck everybody. Fuck everybody. Fuck everybody. And she just kissed me too. Yeah, I, I, I gotta book my flight. And at the end of the day. I'm happy to see more and more, not only black men happy, but men in general being happy. This is Cartagena, Colombia. These dudes are going all over the world with those passports. They're getting those stamps. They're meeting beautiful people. Look at this. You got the marriages going down in Cartagena, Colombia. See, the thing about it is these people here were so worried about winter coming that they forgot about summer. And the passport bros are going to rule 
the summer in 2023. Booking flights, getting ready, wheels up, wheels up. We are ruling 2023. Mark my words. If I were to go to Asia, where would I go to find a great girlfriend? I Asia. think you should just go to the rural area because they grow them cute and they are not polluted by capitalism because all the major cities like Beijing and Shanghai. How much money do you have? Really? Oh, what car you drive? Wow. The nice Chinese girl in the rural area who grew up raising sheep and cows and like feeding pigs and growing corns, they just have big hands and big feet to work. They don't even know they are pretty and they would just feel You're very lucky to find a nice man who respect them and love them. Can I give you a ticket? What? Can I give you a ticket? Yes. Because you want a ticket to anywhere. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Can I go with you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. To be continued.